This news program is proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and M Now Biscuits. MVIL pays interim dividend of 22.82 million to KCH. Ian Marape says the country is ready to receive Indian Prime Minister. And MRDC officially opens a new computer lab for Kikori Secondary School. A very good evening. This is National MTV News. I'm Godwin Eki. Thank you for joining us. Prime Minister James Morape on the launching night of the Special Economic Zone Summit stated that a few areas have been identified to be potential locations for the establishment of Special Economic Zone in the country. And let me announce tonight, uh, Minister Maru knows few sites who are ready, especially those who are closest to port, closest to airport, closest to existing power, closest to telecommunication facility, this site will be given push at the very earliest. That includes Central, West Sipik, East New Britain, Morro Bay, as well as Manus as a tax-free province, and one or two pioneer in this SEJ like EU and others will be given support. But first thing first, those that are lowest hanging fruit in as far as development is concerned, where enabling infrastructures are closest or available, we will get to work in the first instance. Motor Vehicle Insurance Limited has made a payment of interim dividend of 22.82 million kina from an unaudited net operating profit of 91.2 million kina for the 2022 financial year to the Kumu Consolidated Holdings Managing Director, Professor, Kavanar, Professor David Governor Moore, in the presence of the Minister for State Enterprises, William Duma, today in Port Moresby. Chief Executive Officer of MVIL Michael Markup during the presentation of the dividend check revealed a 14% increase in shares for the 2022 financial year compared to the previous year. Uh, the dividend declared is in line with the uh, shareholder dividend policy uh, in consideration of the company achieving its performance targets and reporting profits. So we, we operate within the guidelines of what KCH sets and we occupy our own space and we carry that out uh, consistently and, and uh, d diligently and so the results speak for itself. Uh, in 2022 the company paid an interim uh, uh, dividend of 50 toya and a final dividend of 60 toya per share totaling uh, one kina Ten toya per share for the financial year and 2021. That's the previous year. Mr. Markup added that the dividend declared is in line with the shareholder dividend policy, in consideration of the company achieving its performance targets and reporting profits. CEO Markup, in the presence of the minister responsible William Duma, gave a rundown on the statistics for the dividend payment made to the state in the last four years. We paid a total dividend of 187 million. 569,154. That's a four-year period. Now, that does not um, uh, include the other taxes that we pay as well, salary and wages, GST. Now, uh, that statistic, salary and wages in the last four years, we paid 11 million, uh, and GST in the last four years, we have paid 18 million. Corporate taxes of 15 million. So, a total of 231 million in the last four years have been delivered to KCH and also to the government of PNG. State Enterprises Minister William Duma commanded the MVIL CEO and the Board of Directors and the staff for delivering the results. I'm very pleased with what you've done. And I, I can confidently say that with your continued efforts, the way you're able to manage those fraudulent claims and the way you're able to manage your efficiency, your turnaround and managing claims and all the others, Within the next couple of years, I can confidently predict that you may be able to reach, uh, you should be able to reach uh, 
the 100 million kina mark. Minister Duma further elaborated on the significance of the SOE companies and the impact they have towards the growth of the economy. Uh, SOEs employ more than 4,000 people uh, with net assets, I mean assets of more than 4 billion. So you're a strong contributor to the uh, economy, in case you don't realize this. Minister Duma revealed that with the tremendous efforts displayed by MVIL, he is confident that MVIL can reach a hundred million kina profit in the next few years. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. Minister for State Enterprises William Duma today revealed that a six-month rescue package has been approved by the National Executive Council to address the issues of continuous power outages in the country. Minister responsible for the SOE PNG Power Limited today revealed that they are awaiting funding allocation from the national government to execute some of the strategies they have in place to address the power outage issues experienced widely around the country. Power disruptions, we went to cabinet, brought a six month rescue package to cabinet for its endorsements. Uh, cabinet approved the uh, that uh, proposal and it also approved the uh, release of funding. Uh, as soon as uh, the funding is available, all those uh, changes will be implemented. Minister Duma revealed that meetings have been held every week to look at some of the best ways to address the issues and gave a brief on some of the things that need to be rectified. I must say that we've been meeting nearly every weekend uh, simply to look at uh, the problems being encountered at PNG Power. We've not been sitting back. We've done a lot of review, there's a lot of re literature. Uh, we now know exactly where the problems are. It's a combination of aging infrastructure, a combination of incompetence in, in the SOE, at PNG Power, uh, duplication of uh, 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 positions, uh, some corrupt practices, the old works. Do you have a toxic? Uh, environment there. But that does not mean that we cannot fix it. We've worked very, very hard. Uh, got a team led by KCH. Uh, they have independently uh, uh, studied the literature, literature, workshop the issues. Uh, they've left that PNG power for the time being. They've done it from outside. And then uh, what has happened is that uh, uh, with the approval of KCH, uh, the management structure is now being reviewed and there's a, there's a new structure. <coughs> that has been approved by the board, it will come to a case it will then be approved and so we streamlining everything. Minister Duma revealed that before December the country will see a better PNG power that will be able to manage all those power issues. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. The nation's capital has started preparations for the historic visit of U.S. President Joe Biden and Indian Prime Minister Nahendra Modi, along with other regional leaders. A bilateral meet will be held with both countries, along with the foreign, with the Forum for India-Pacific Island Corporation meet. Marape appealed to the country to appreciate the visits as national and global interest will be a major topic of conversations to the world leaders. Prime Minister James Marape, surrounded by the Working Committee members and other parliamentary leaders, met with the media. Marape's main agenda was the visit of U.S. President Joe Biden and Indian Prime Minister Nahendra Modi. The visit of U.S. President Joe Biden and Indian Prime Minister Nahendra Modi has been touted as historic and unprecedented, and Prime Minister James Marape, without being too specific, gave some indication of the topics that would be discussed during the bilateral meet. Our national interests as well as our regional interests uh, would be placed to both leaders. In the FIBIC meeting, we, uh, Pacific and India has always been in dialogue. Uh, this time around, the meeting is taking place here in our country. and We will relate with India like never before uh, for the Pacific, but for the PNG context also in what the Marape, Rosso and the current generation of leaders want to fine-tune into our, all our foreign relations the aspect of trade commerce. It was also revealed that an entourage of U.S. investors will be accompanying the U.S. president. 
we want to ramp up with all our relationships. Uh, India uh, also coming to the table in the context. They will bring to the discussions specific aspects of the bilateral that we will have with them, as well as the, uh, uh, the uh, engagements that they will have with the entire Pacific nations put together. Uh, USA too, likewise. It's uh, many things that we're just coming from security and, uh, and, and uh, geopolitical uh, perspectives. Meanwhile, City Governor Powers Parkop has appealed to citizens to take advantage of the historic event. We are here to give support to the Prime Minister and the government to make sure that uh, we leverage it and we promote our country in a very positive way and uh, help the government to achieve the objective or outcome that the uh, government wants to promote uh, in terms of this uh, visit uh, together with all the Pacific Island leaders. So, we have already started in the city, you know, uh, beautifying, cleaning, and um, also uh, dressing the city. So this uh, meeting today has given us a very specific areas in which we are going to do. Specific details about the visit were not given by the Prime Minister, and Marapa has told the media that another press conference will be held later this week for announcement of details. Rocky Iso, National MTV News. The swearing-in ceremony of certified practicing accountant members and alternate members of the Accountant Registration Board of PNG was held today at the Airways Hotel in Port Moresby. A total of 13 out of 16 board members were sworn in. The Accounts Registration Board of PNG were all smiles today as they prepared to be sworn in. At the same time, the board is continuing its push on improving standards as revealed today during the swearing in ceremony. It began with the Auditor General of PNG and ex officio chairman of the Accounts Registration Board of PNG, Gordon Kega, welcoming the new board members and gave a legal interpretation on their functions. As prescribed in Section 9 of the Act, it's a point. Appointed member and alternate member of the board shall take an oath or make an affirmation before the minister or the persons appointed by the minister. And this should be done before a member enters into duties of his or her office. The minister responsible for the Accounts Registration Board of PNG is the Prime Minister, who was unable to be present and graciously appointed the member for Ongai Bena, minister assisting the Prime Minister, Kinoka Feo, to speak. One of our biggest problems is uh, the evasion of taxes, contributing to uh, reduced revenue. And the accountants play a big role in that as well, ensuring that the right uh, tax returns are made and submitted to IRC. Uh, honest reports are made. That's one of our biggest challenges. In taking the stage, Chairman for CPA PNG Richard Kuna called on the Minister assisting the Prime Minister and Ungai Bena MP Kinoka Feo to be CPA's mouthpiece on the floor of Parliament for the amendment of the Accountant Act 1996. We've got a very good connection going through. We've got uh, many things planned or thinking of, uh, and including important uh, piece of legislation that's going to get through. So uh, we would want to uh, think that you would be the minister taken into the floor of parliament, so thank you for your support. The members sworn in today are no strangers to having a seat on the board as they have served on other boards before, and while taking the oath of office, they were reminded to serve with distinction and honour. Rocky Iso, National MTV News. Kikori Secondary School in Gulf Province is now the first school to have a new computer lab with 24 new computers. This facility was built by the Mineral Resources Development Company for students to use in accessing the internet for their studies. The Managing Director for MRDC, Augustine Mano, was present to officially open the new computer lab facility. Present today at the official opening of the computer lab were MRDC representatives, staff, students and parents of Kikori Secondary School. It's the captain of the ribbon. The managing director for MRDC, Augustin Mano, officially opened the new computer lab and thanked the school board, principal and the director for Segment 7 for their cooperation and support in putting up this facility. 
He says the only way to bring changes to remote areas is to educate the young generation. With the aim of setting education as a top priority for project-impacted areas, Mr. Mano confirmed that about 7.8 million kina will be used to build classrooms for all the primary schools in the project-impacted areas. And the people must not be left behind. And the only way we can do justice to the people of Kikori is to educate the young generation so that they are prepared for these changes. If those of us in position of responsibility, position of power, if we cannot do this, we have failed in our duty. That is why last year we did an ambitious plan to educate the mass of people of Kikori. And remember, MRDC team is we leave no behind, no one behind in education. This new facility will have a positive impact in the teaching and learning of students and teachers at Kikori. This was stressed by the school principal, Uleki Uamo. The new facility brings us on par with the rest of the country. It has been a dream among our students, staffs, and I think Kikori Secondary would be the only school to have an, uh, a state-of-the-art facility in Gulf Province. Estagane, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. You're watching National MTV News. Speaking highly on economic diversification, Prime Minister James Marape says companies operating in the country should look at ways of creating a link between them and the government through the public-private partnership for the betterment of the country's economy moving forward. According to PM Marape, despite having a deficit budget, the economy is still progressing well. The economy is a 113 billion kin economy. That's a growth of 33 billion. <laughs> Using deficit budget as a tool to transfer wealth to our people, make it happen where it matters most. He said special economic zones must be a focus point and drive to ensure the country's economic diversification strategy, including the push towards moving into downstream processing, has come at its earliest. That is why we have the coffee ministry. Papua New Guinea, your own land. Why can't you produce the coffee that they, the market ever ready, available? A very important bilateral partner. All our coffee is not enough to flood the Chinese marketplace, Japanese marketplace, Korean marketplace, let alone Australian marketplace. Marape is urging for a stronger establishment of the private-public partnership to be developed so as to help boost the country's economy moving forward. In the manufacturing sector, they've had our cry to be now moving towards manufacturing in a big way. No more export of raw products to the marketplace. We want to export finished product. They're coming with a team of manufacturers. Are we ready is the big question. Are we ready is the big question. Are we ready in the provinces? Prime Minister James Marape has been vocal on downstream processing as well as increasing the production of various types of cash crops in the country. Coffee has captured the attention as one of the cash crops worth millions of kina. Marape added that while the world is hungry for coffee, PNG has been challenged to increase its coffee production. As the government's attention focuses on special economic zones and moving away from non-renewable resources to renewable resources to growing the country's economy, the focus now is on cash crops. An industry worth millions of kina, the coffee industry has now come under the limelight, as Prime Minister James Marape highlighted during the SEZ summit launch. Key government policies in the downstream sector key government policies in the SEZ that we will be unraveling and working towards and giving incentives. I want you who are already tax-paying businesses in our country, pick up those incentives, pick up those concessions and work with us. 
Marape also recalled that during the APEC summit in 2018 in PNG, leaders from China were asked if they were able to buy coffee from PNG, and the response was, I want to give assurance issues like land access, issues like SME support, issues like putting money to assist for state equity in projects that we feel we must support, issues like working on enabling infrastructures. Marape further added that with the hopes of increasing the country's economy, the government will push to have no more exports of raw materials out of the country as the government is looking to establish special economic zones in the country, but questioned if the people of this country are ready. And those of you who were with me in Edevu a few weeks back know a private sector built a power line. We put in 100 million kina to uplift the power back into Port Mosby. These are indications of our government's commitment to ensure we address the loopholes, the deficiencies, to make SEJ work. Prime Minister Marape has challenged the new coffee minister, Joe Cooley, and his ministry to work extra hard and to increase the production of coffee as the world awaits to receive fresh quality coffee from PNG. Health workers in West New Britain province are into their second day today with the rollout of their vaccination program. They have been challenged by the World Health Organization to reach a target of 85% and are appealing to parents to bring in their children from young age to five years old to the health facilities for vaccination to protect the children from polio, measles and rubella. Following the official launching of the vaccination program by the Governor of West New Britain, Sassindra Mutuvel, the health team from the province commenced their motorcade awareness yesterday. <laughs> program manager of Family Health Services, Sister Jennifer Ravakai, highlighted that three strategies will be used to execute the vaccination program in the province. Actually, three strategies um, to be uh, applied uh, for all the health facilities. Uh, that includes mobile clinics, outreach clinics, and uh, static. So, 38 facilities will have all static clinics, and they have all, uh, teams that will be going out doing mobile and outreach clinics. And uh, the town area, market area, church area, those are special uh, places where that are also included in the under those health facilities who will be taking part. So uh, the town area, Kisera area, all these areas, it's under Kimbe Urban Clinic, so they will have teams mobilized to these areas. According to Sister Ravakai, the last two immunization program have dropped, and she made an appeal to parents to bring in children aged zero to five years old to get vaccinated. Appeal is uh, to all the parents uh, throughout um, all districts, the three districts in the province, throughout the province, Western Britain province, is to um, bring all the children from zero to five years of age um, to the nearest clinics so, or uh, vaccination points where these teams will be going out to conduct the vaccination and to receive the um, she further elaborated on the importance of this vaccination program. Vaccination is very important as um, um, targeting the children under five years because uh, this, uh, the children under five years uh, have low immunity and they are vulnerable to um, catching um, childhood uh, diseases like measles, rubella, polio, TB, whooping cough, those are child, few of the childhood diseases that I've mentioned. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. Western Highlands Provincial Health Authority will be rolling out the Supplementary Immunization Activity Program in the next three weeks. This follows the launching of the measles, rubella, and polio Supplementary Immunization Activity Program yesterday in Mount Hagen. It was revealed that a lot of children in Western Highlands Province who are under the age of five have not been vaccinated. 
Health officials in Mount Hagen also clarify that there are nine different types of vaccinations that the children would need, apart from missiles and polio vaccinations. Local leaders in all four districts of Western Highlands province are being challenged to encourage their people to bring in their children for immunization. People are also being urged to ensure no child is left out when health teams visit their areas. Vitamin A drops are also being administered in order to prevent eye problems for the children. This program is free of charge and is initiated by the National Health Department to save the lives of Papua New Guinean children. Florence John Duo, National MTV News. And now looking at the Nest Fund market report, the Kina closed unchanged at 0.2840 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina was buying 0.2765 US dollars, 0.4046 Australian dollars, 0.2436 Euro, 36.9 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York closed, gold is trading lower, coffee closed lower, cocoa closed higher, copra closed higher, Palm oil closed lower, crude oil is trading lower, and copper closed higher. On the stock market, the Dow Jones closed lower, the ASX 200 is trading lower, and the All Ordinaries is trading lower. National MTV News continues after the break with more stories. Stay with us. You're watching National MTV News, a key enabler for special economic zone in the country is telecommunications solutions. Papua New Guinea telecommunications provider, Telecom Limited CEO, Amos Tepi has provided information on this at the Special Economic Zone Summit this afternoon. As the telecommunication service provider for Papua New Guinea, they are ready to partner with the Special Economic Zone projects. Telecom Limited CEO Amos Tepi highlighted this at the summit this afternoon. Some of the enablers for our SEZ communication services that we would like to announce here is we do um, fully redundant high-speed broadband internet services, we provide that. We also do value-added services, customer type business and engine solutions. Uh, we do quarter trailer play station, smart concept like smart phone, TV. CEO Tepi emphasized on the enablers for SEZ communication services. Exit ground. We also provide all the communication through our microwave link, which is uh, extending into our SEZ uh, areas. And also we provide fiber extending, extending into all those SEZ. And lastly, is the satellite coverage right across the remote sites as well. Grace Papiali, National MTV News. The International Special Economic Zone Summit ended today at the Stanley Hotel in Port Moresby. Key speakers included Deputy Prime Minister and Lands Minister John Rosso and Internal Security Minister Peter Chamalili Jr. and other departmental secretaries and CEOs. Deals from them. The afternoon session saw key topics raised in the space of special economic zone, customary land mobilization, policing, port solution, connect PNG, road connectivity, telecommunications and state equity funding for SEZ. The Minister for Lands and Physical Planning, John Russo, spoke about enabling land for establishing special economic zone projects in Papua New Guinea. The Department of Lands and my ministry are doing a part to ensure that the SEZ initiative of our government succeeds. And I'm highly confident with the driving force of the current minister and his vice minister and staff that will be able to make this a success. We are fully committed to finding a solution to the issue of land tenure, security over land for SEZ. Mr. Rosso highlighted the land acquisition process. So Papua New have different ways of 
releasing or acquire, getting the land uh, sorted out. So we are looking at working closely with the good uh, minister for investment to ensure that each project is handled with its own issues. You cannot address something that is, let's say, in a different, uh, in, on Bougainville, for example, you can't uh, address it similar to something like outside of Port Mosby. So each uh, land component, we have to sit down, listen to the people, and see which is the best way that we can approach it. And we can approach it using existing legislations. Internal Security Minister Peter Siamalili Jr. spoke on how policing plays a vital role in enabling security for special economic zone projects in the country. And I encourage each one of us, when we are putting strategies in place to manage the space of SEZ, our community engagement is important because they will be your source of intelligence. The police should engage with the local community to promote and trust a cooperation and to establish collaborative relationships between law enforcement and the community. This includes providing community education programs on crime prevention and safety and establishing mechanisms for the community to report suspicious activities. Pod Solutions for Special Economic Zone was also discussed as one of the key enablers for the SEZ project. PNG Port's acting CEO Rodney Begley spoke on this aspect. We work with NFA, we will work with other civil and marine Papua New Guinean com um, companies to help us redevelop these ports. And finally, security, governance and transparency. Those three words has allowed us to secure up to 1.8 billion kina of funding because they trust PNG ports and we're delivering on our promises with the support of our, our fellow SOEs and the national government. Grace Papiali, National, MTV News. The people of Mook in the Anglim LLG of Jiwaka province have been urged to embrace services and development. This call was made by Anglim LLG project coordinator Thomas Peke on behalf of local Anglim Sawagi MP and Coffee Minister Joe Cooley. Speaking during a recent road upgrade ceremony, up to 4,000 people of the Menge tribe have been thanked for letting the road upgrade pass through their land. It is understood that in the past, people walk long distances to a nearest village called Kartanim, where they access PMVs to go into town. Peke said with the road upgrade, coaster buses are now reaching the remote people at their doorsteps, something they have wished for since independence. He urged people to start getting into coffee farming, given that their land is suited for the cash crop, coupled with the fact that the local MP is the Minister for Coffee. With 3.5 kilometres of road already upgraded, Peke said another 3.5 kilometres is yet to be done. He thanked the people for their cooperation in releasing their land, homes and coffee plots for the road upgrade. Mothers and women folk in the village have expressed appreciation for the development. Florence John Duo, National MTV News. You're watching National MTV News. Trukai Sports is next. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. The SP Sports Awards nominees for 2023 were formally announced today at the St. John Guys Indoor Complex in Port Mosby. There are 13 categories for this year. The awards night will take place on Saturday, the 27th of May, 2023. The SP Sports Awards Selection Panel Chair Warwick Vela says the 35 panelists were assessed under 13 categories consisting of top three finalists. Uh, now it gives me great pleasure to announce the 
finalists for this year. Vele then went on to officially announce the finalists in alphabetical order. Starting with the Stan Joyce Award, the nominations are BSP Cricket, Digicel PNG, Sports Top. In the Sports Photo of the Year, the nominations are Shoot the Celebrant by Charlie Dumavi, No Rain Can Stop Us by Jordan Serra, and Barefoot Champ by Fidelis Wasari. The Trucai Industry Sports, the Truco Industries Limited Sports Media Award, the nominations are Charlie Dumavi from the Sunday Bulletin, Patricia Kiamo from the National Newspaper, and Rikula Wura from FM 100 Sports Breakfast Show. SP Brewery Corporate Affairs Manager John Nilkare says this year's status of the nomination saw a 175% increase compared to last year's, which is fantastic. He further added that 61% of that nomination were done online, even though they just introduced the online platform this year. 61% of the nominations actually came through the online platform, right? And we just introduced that this year. So, I mean, for me, that just reinforces the fact that I think, you know, going forward, we should really, really push this online platform because it gives easy access to uh, people to, um, you know, vote on, right? Meanwhile, the People's Choice Awards has been officially opened today by Vele following the announcement of the 35 nominees. Lisa Punichukai Sports. The Mumase Regional Championship, set for the 25th of this month, will see athletes from right across the country participate. Benjamin Aliel, a national runner, has been undergoing his training sessions at the St. John Guy's track and field as he prepares and looks forward to competing in the Mumase Regionals. Trained under the Nest Athletics Club and coached by the former PNG runner Nelson Stone, Benjamin Aliel has been doing double training sessions a day since September last year. Trukai Sports caught up with Aliel at the St. John Guy Stadium today and he says his season openers were the Southern Regional and the Nationals as he gears up for the PNG Games and the Momase Regionals. I started September last year and the uh, regional, Southern Regionals and the Nationals was my two, um, like a season opener for me. And now I'm looking forward for the, the Nationals that is coming up, Thailand's Momosa Regional Championships up in Goroka. So um, I'm getting ready to go up to Goroka to compete. Aliel further added that there are a lot of competitive athletes this season and he says he will do his best to utilize this event to make the final team PNG for the November Solomon Islands Pacific Games. Just preparing to go up there and to run uh, the best that I could in the 400 meters. I'm trying to make the team for the Pacific Games too. And there, there are a lot of athletes in the 400 meter events. But, um, I'm pushing my very best to be yeah, very competitive and to be in the team. Aliel will be competing in the 200-meter and 400-meter events in the upcoming Momase Games. Lisa Puni, Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports continues after the break. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. Welcome back to Trukai Sports. We continue with overseas sports. The NRL's head of football has defended the game's officials after a club sponsor lashed out. It all happened in the wake of the New Zealand Warriors' loss to Penrith on Saturday. Jason Paris, who's the CEO of Warriors sponsor 1NZ, was fuming and took to social media, describing some decisions as cheating of the highest order. He later tweeted again to clarify his comments, saying he does not think the referees are cheating, but he maintains there's a subconscious bias against the New Zealand team. The NRL's head of football, Graeme Annesley, was not happy about any of it, saying all of those out in the field work very hard and you cannot question their integrity. Australian cyclist Michael Matthews has become the first Australian to claim a state victory this year at one of cycling's Grand Tour. 
The 32-year-old from Canberra climbed the 213-kilometre third stage of the Giro d'Italia, with fellow Aussie Caden Groves finishing third for the second day in a row. After a gruelling five-plus hours in the saddle, Matthews was the first to launch a sprint uphill, holding on to record the 10th Grand Tour stage of his career. He's just over a minute off the overall race lead, which is still held by world champion Remco Avonpole of Belgium. To AFL, a player has become a victim of a racial post following the weekend matches. With Port Adelaide forced to condemn a post aimed at small forward junior Rioli. In a statement, the club says racism has no place in our society or national game and has described the Facebook post as a reprehensible behaviour. Multiple reports of racist comments being directed towards First Nations players have been made to the AFL's integrity unit this season. Meanwhile, junior Rioli is facing the tribunal tonight after this off the ball collision, which can cast to Essendon's Jordan Ridley on Sunday. Day. And it's said to be a rather busy night at the tribunal tonight with three more cases to be heard. Melbourne will contest Jacob Van Royen's two-game ban for striking Gold Coast's Charlie Ballard. Carlton's Nick Newman and Geelong's Brad Close will also attempt to have one-match suspensions overturned. That ends Drukai Sports D Money Plus. Weather report is next. Stay with us. Drukai Sports. True Kai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. Weather forecast for the next 24 hours. Southern region, Port Mosby, partly cloudy with a shower or two. Daru evening showers and possible thunderstorm. Kerma, possible evening showers and thunderstorm. Alatau, rain showers and possible thunderstorm. Popondeta, cloudy periods with some showers and possible thunderstorm. In the Mamase region, lay evening rain showers and thunderstorm. Medeng, partly cloudy with possible evening showers. We work some rain showers and possible thunderstorm. Banimo, rain showers and possible thunderstorm. In the New Guinea Islands region, Loringau mostly fine, KVN mostly fine, partly cloudy with evening shower or two. Kokopo and Rabao brief evening showers and possible thunderstorm. Kimbe mostly fine, partly cloudy with possible evening showers. Buka possible brief evening showers and partly cloudy. In the Highlands region, Mount Hagen few showers and thunderstorm. Goroka and Kundiawa partly cloudy with brief showers. Mendi and Wabe few showers and possible thunderstorm. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus, with you always. And that wraps up the news, sports and weather for Tuesday, the 9th of May, 2023. From the entire news team, pleasant viewing. Bye for now. This news program was proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and Gold Nuggets.